Hi, this is Phil Chandler. In today's video, I've got a bunch of ideas for you, uh, some of which I hope will prove useful if you're using a top bar hive, especially. Before that, I'd just like to remind you uh, there's some buttons below for subscribing and liking and things like that. Please hit them because it does help me a bit and I like to get some encouragement for making these videos because it does take a certain amount of time and effort to, to do this. So uh, if you can encourage me, that would be great. Okay, right, let's crack on. The first thing I want to talk about is this, which is a nucleus hive, uh, which is simply a small version of the top bar hive. You can see it's pretty simple. It's actually made from four identical pieces of, uh, well, I guess Americans would call it 12 by one, and we would call it uh, 30, centimeter or 300 millimeters deep let's just ignore the bottom bit for a minute this piece is 300 millimeters deep by <laughs> 18 inches wide because i can't remember what 18 inches is it'll be about 450 millimeters i suppose and so there's four identical pieces i've added handles just simple bits of wood each side to lift it and the other thing i've done is of course it's added a an eco floor or a, a floor anyway, which uh, would be an eco floor if it had some stuff in it. I'll just show you how that's attached. There are two of these little spring catches, one each end, and that's what holds the floor to the main body of the hive. And if I can just lift that up, you can see the floor itself is made from four pieces of Again, what Americans would call four by one, we would call it 100 millimeters by 25. And you can see that it's got a coarse mesh floor. This is actually quarter inch or six mil um, galvanized uh, chicken wire, I suppose, although it's a bit small for chickens, but galvanized wire anyway. And you can see it's held on by galvanized roof nails as well. Okay, so very simple construction. The line of the of these pieces simply follows the V-shape of the uh, main body of the hive. Now this being a small nucleus box takes 12 bars. If you use 38 millimeter spacing or one and a half inch spacing, it takes 12 bars, which is just about perfect for catching swarms. So I'm gonna put the body of the hive back on. I'm doing this one-handed because obviously I'm holding the camera with the other one. Um, let me just wriggle that on. Do up the spring catches. And the other one. Okay, so just with those two catches that holds it together, um, whoops, <laughs> those two catches hold it together and we've got a quite a stable structure and we can add our top bars to that as normal. Now, these boxes, incredibly useful for, for all sorts of things, but mainly as, for two things, mainly as bait boxes for swarms and also for making splits into. Um, they are small enough to uh, pick up and carry and put in the car without too much trouble. And they are big enough to hold a colony uh, let's say a swarm starting in here could stay put for probably a good chunk of the summer, in fact, um, without fight feeling too crowded. I mean, it's about the same volume as a standard UK national hive brood box. So uh, it's, it's big enough to hold a colony for a short time. Not, not forever, and you wouldn't want to um, use this as a, as, a, as a hive that you were going to... Um, keep bees in on a permanent basis. This is a temporary home for bees, but it's ideal for catching swarms because they love this, this kind of size. This is the kind of space that attracts them. You'll notice that it's got three entrance holes on the sloping face here because my entrances, as per this hive here, also have their entrance on the sloping side. Now, that's not to everybody's taste, but there are very good reasons for choosing the sloping sides for your entrances. So reason number one, if you use side entrances like this, then the bees will come in in between combs, which means that they have direct access 
to at least two combs immediately. They don't have to climb under several combs that would otherwise be facing them. If the entrance was at the end here, they would have to get past the first comb and the second comb and however many there were before they were able to unload their, uh, their nectar and pollen and uh, then it would be stored wherever in the hive. With side entrances like this, the bees come in, they're immediately got uh, a couple of combs to choose from to go between and there, there are, will always be workers there waiting to meet them at the entrance. That's the first thing. Another obvious thing perhaps is that the uh, overhang of the hive, the natural overhang of this slope, um, shelters the bees as they arrive. They, the, this is, this is got a, gonna have a lid on it as well, of course, a roof. And that means that the bees, when they turn up and when they're leaving, are always sheltered from the, well, certainly from rain and to a great extent from the wind because they've got these these side pieces either side of them here to break the wind so it gives a much better shelter for the bees uh, to have side entrances there than it does to have them on the end here which is a flat surface no shelter whatsoever okay before I go any further I'm actually going to add some floor material to this hive because then you'll be able to see a little bit better what I'm talking about so in here there's damp wood shavings, wood chips, and a uh, few twigs, few leaves, that sort of thing. That's an ideal for, a, for an eco floor. So uh, this would be the natural floor of the hive as it is right now. And I'll just grab a comb and you'll better see what I mean. Okay, so I've just put a single uh, used comb in here and you can see that the the bottom of it virtually reaches the uh, the eco floor. Now, if I position that between a couple of entrance holes, you can see that the bees come in that way on and they can go straight onto a comb and then they can travel in that direction. And on the other side, they can do exactly the same thing. And there will be multiple combs here and they've got a choice of which combs they go on to. If the entrance was down there at the end, this first comb would act as a barrier to a large extent and they'd have to go under it or round it in order to get to where they need to deposit their nectar and pollen and so forth. So I think this is a better option. Um, you can close one or more of those holes with corks or wads of grass or whatever you have handy should you decide that there is too many um, entrances open. For example, if it's a very small colony, they will only need one entrance hole, arguably even when this colony is full, I, I, I think two is probably actually plenty, but there is the option to have three should you want them, uh, or as many as you like, frankly. The other thing you can do, should you want to in, the, in this box, is to add a follower board and actually make um, a split inside the hive. So by, by careful positioning of the follower board, for example, it could go there. I'm, I've only got one hand free, so I can't really show this very well, but I can, I can embed this into the floor very easily, right? So I can, I can push that into the floor material and then I can move the floor material to seal up the gap. And by that means I've got a, if, as long as the follower board fits uh, correctly, I've got actually a divided hive. So I could, for example, have um, two colonies in here uh, for queen mating purposes. So I could have two small nukes in here and I could close up the middle entrance, just use the other side entrances and I could mate two queens in here should I choose to. If I was going to do that, to be honest, what I would do is to actually put an entrance on the other side opposite. So diagonally opposite. I'd have one hole here, one hole here, and then the uh, when the queens go out to get mated, then they're not going to get confused. When they come back, they'll, they'll be able to spot their uh, own particular en entrance much more easily. So that's another use for this box for queen mating. While well, we've got the follower board to hand, notice that there's a hole in it right there. That's there for a reason. Um, the reason being essentially, well, mainly for feeding purposes. And that would go along with this little gadget here, which is simply a thin piece of plywood okay it's um it's it's that size <laughs> it's about 100 mil 100 millimeters or four inches wide and it's the correct width i'm guessing it's just over nine inches 
Um, so that would be whatever that is in metric wide. So it sits halfway down the hive, somewhere near halfway down, it doesn't have to be exactly. It needs to have enough space above it so that you can position jars on there. And I'm just going to grab a jar so I can show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here is a jar of crystallized honey from last year. You can feed honey by this method. Um, normally we would be feeding sugar syrup, but you could feed crystallized honey by a very simple means of removing the lid and inverting it over those holes. Putting the follower board, actually, <laughs> I've just noticed that the um, hole on this follower board is a bit high. Okay. I've just done a, a slight um, uh, a second take on this because the, uh, the follower board I picked up, the hole in it was actually a little bit high for this particular length of um, board. Uh, to, to use it, I would have had to have made this board a little bit longer, which obviously I can't do right now. If I was going to feed this colony in here, if there's a colony in here and I wanted to feed them honey, I could do so simply by inverting. This is a, a, a crystallized and uh, unfiltered, as you can see by the, by the mess in the top, um, jar of honey. Now I could simply put that over the hole. I would obviously need to, to either put another jar over this hole or put, uh, close, that, close that space off, maybe with a lid, something like that. They can go through that hole down there. You can see this, this, this one's actually got a, a rotating door on it, which is kind of potentially useful. They can go through that hole, collect honey, come back, store it, whatever they're going to do with it, and all's well. And the main thing is that they are protected from wasps while they're doing so because no wasp can actually get at the honey. They can get into this space maybe under the under the uh, under the edge of the roof um, but they can't get to the honey because it's effectively sealed. You can do exactly the same thing with sugar syrup uh, in which case you would want to obviously put um, some holes in the lid. Now if you do that with a, uh, a standard drawing pin if there is such a thing uh, or thumbtack, I think they're also called. If you perforate this lid, which is quite thin metal, um, with a thumbtack uh, or something of exactly that that size, uh, lots of holes all over, and then you fill it with sugar syrup, you can invert that over the hole, and by the magic of atmospheric pressure, the syrup won't actually run out. It will stay in the jar, but it will form little drops underneath and the bees can come through and they can feed from the from those drops and deal with it as if it was nectar obviously in the normal way so this this is a feeding uh, system which would apply equally to the big hive to a normal size hive as well as to the nuke box so you can you can use the same thing in either all it requires is this simple piece of plywood with a couple of holes drilled through it with a with one of those round um, hole saws uh, round hole saws as, it, as if they would be some other shape but you know what I mean a hole saw the, these holes are about I don't know 50 millimeters maybe slightly more 54 millimeters I think in fact they were and that will take the um, standard honey jar comfortably with a nice seal around the edge okay let's get on to some more ideas here is a an idea here is a, a device which I have used successfully. This is this is a an adaptation of a follower board. You should, you can see it's a, it's a sawn off follower board, and the reason for it being sawn off is that there are occasions when bees don't exactly perform as we would wish, and they make uh, how should we say slightly off center comb, or they start cross combing. Now this follower board was designed to stop cross combing dead in its tracks and it works remarkably well and what happens is this what you do is you open your hive and you cut back the comb um, if necessary you cut clear across the cross comb at a certain point where you're not necessarily going to be discarding brood but simply you, you're going to be discarding either empty comb or comb with not very much in it and then you put this okay let's let's pretend that we've done that with this comb here's a here's a comb here with with uh, this is actually a normal one but let's say it was all kind of cross combed and messy we would then put this in as a block 
okay, this would tell the bees, ah, okay, you cannot build any more cross comb in this area over here. What you've got to do now is start again and keep it straight. So we would keep adding top bars to this side here. And because there's a, a solid block here, they cannot build comb except on the lower edge. I've got another one here, which is exactly the same, only, only shorter. I can't tell you the ideal measurement for these things. This one's about, I don't know, three inches deep, but uh, the other one's considerably deeper. But basically what you're trying to do is give the bees a strong hint that they must not build anything but straight comb. And what they will do is they will build a comb on the lower edge of this follower board. It's, it's a kind of partial follower board. They'll build a comb on the lower edge of it. And of course that will be straight. And then from then on, they will continue, hopefully, to build straight comb. Of course, another way of keeping bees building straight comb is simply to add uh, a comb like this. This is um, maybe two year old comb. It's perfectly usable. Um, I would be happy to use that in a hive. Put that in between or in amongst um, combs that are just starting to be built with a new swarm. And that, that will give them a very strong hint that they, you want them to build straight comb. Okay, coming back to this, you'll notice that it has these half round holes drilled through and that is, as you probably have guessed, for feeding purposes. You'll see there's, there's ways here that the bees can come up through those holes and you can put a feeder on the top or a lump of fondant. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. On this side is a variation on that theme. This is a slot that's cut away from the edge of the, of the uh, top bar here. And you'll notice it's got angled sides and there is somewhere, I can't find it at the moment, a piece of wood that simply drops into that slot so that when you've got two bars together like that, that piece of wood drops into that slot. It's got a little knob on it so you can lift it out. And because the sides are angled, it just sits there. And of course, um, cunningly, the angle goes not only uh, this way, but also slightly that way so that it actually locks into place as you drop it in. Now, uh, that is a very simple way of having a, an openable slot for feeding purposes. While I'm busy talking to my camera, um, there's a hive here which is uh, really working themselves hard. They've got lots of pollen coming in and uh, making lots of efficient sounding noise. And there's a lot of drones around. Uh, I suspect they're probably making queen cells. Uh, I haven't checked this one yet, but uh, that's a, a job that I'll have to do, of course. Okay, um, over the years I've tried different designs of top bars and one of the ideas I had which I thought might work and ended up not working terribly well was this. This is um, kind of a super lightweight top bar. <laughs> you can see it's made from a piece of um, half round dowel. Uh, I guess it's about 20 millimeters wide, something like that. And that's attached to two thin strips of, um, what would that be, Twin, um, 30 something by not very much, uh, four or five millimeters, something like that. They're quite stiff, even, even though they're made from very light wood, this is uh, quite a, a stiff bar, perfectly capable of holding a comb up. The idea of this was to have a whole rack of these across the hive, and you'll notice that when they butt up together, um, there would actually be a gap uh, between each one in this center section here. Okay, so you'd have a, effectively a row of them, um, not necessarily across the whole width of the hive, but certainly a section of the hive, where the bees would be able to get up between the, these bars as if they were frames, in fact, pretty much. And the reasoning behind that was that I could then take a box like this, in fact, this very design, this is exactly the right uh, width and uh, length for a British National Super. Now, of course, if you're uh, using Langstroths, if you're in, in, in the USA and you're using Langstroths, then you would want to adapt your dimensions probably to suit your uh, Langstroth equipment because obviously if you wanted to put a Langstroth Super on here, it wouldn't fit. But this particular design is intended to match the uh, British National Super, and it does very well. It's, um, 
I guess these are 18 inches, so it would be 20, 20 inches from here to here overall and 18 inches wide. And you'll find that if you actually sit a super on, onto this, it fits very snugly. The idea is that you could then put an ordinary national super on top of this top bar nuke box and the bees would be able to come up and populate the super. And so you could actually use a, a, a British National Super uh, on, on a top bar nuke, okay? And that way, effectively, you could use this as if it was a British Standard National brood box, and you could simply stack supers on it, and the bees would behave as if they were in a British National hive, other than the fact that they were on top bar combs rather than frame combs. Um, okay, so another idea, um, this one. This is a, a feeder, a specially adapted feeder top bar, okay? Now again, I've used this, it works very well. It's a straightforward top bar. This, this one's actually a bit narrow, this is just for demonstration purposes, but it would, it would be a normal width top bar. And you can see that I put spacers at the ends here. The actual position of these can vary, it doesn't matter too much. And then underneath that, I've put a strip of half round dowel. The purpose of that is that the bees can build their comb directly on the half round dowel and it will force them to leave a bee space gap directly above the comb. Now this is, when I say bee space, I mean six to eight millimeters. This is nearer six than eight for sure. And it means that there's a gap there in which the bees can crawl through and they can actually move this way through the hive should they need to. If you had a whole set of these, for example, um, not necessarily with a, with a feeder hole, but a whole set of bars like this, the bees would be able to tra traverse the hive horizontally, as it were, through a tunnel along under the tops of the bars. Now this particular one has a hole in the top, which means that you can actually put a feeder directly over this hole and the bees can come up through the tunnel, access the food, and there you go, very simple. This is, some of you may recognize, um, a top bar that's designed to be used in what has become called the Cathedral Hive. Now, there's a little bit of controversy about this because um, I actually claim, <laughs> I actually claim to have invented the Cathedral Hive uh, back in 2013, I think it was. This is what I actually produced um, initially as, for the idea. And I, I put photographs of these top bars on my forum for people to see and to discuss. And a few months later, the, um, the Cathedral Hive was launched, which had exactly this, uh, this design or something extremely close to it. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not bitter, honestly. And, and I'm very glad that somebody else came up with the same idea because that's what tends to happen, I think, with ideas. Um, lots of people have similar ideas at the same time. And of course, you know, I may not actually have been the first to think of this, but um, I think I was though. Anyway, so, so the idea is to allow the bees to make deeper comb within the space of the top bar hive. Now, the reason for that is that bees do seem to enjoy building deep comb. If you give them the space to do it, they'll build really deep comb. I, I've cut comb out of buildings, which has been, you know, two, two to three feet deep. And so it, it seems clear that bees do like to build deep comb where they can. So if we gave them the opportunity to do so, um, then the question is, you know, would that be a practical hive? Well, it turns out the cathedral hive does seem to be a reasonably practical hive. What I did, I put this bracing wire across here uh, and, and I've done various versions of it. I've done, I did it with wire, I did it with um, doweling, uh, which is perhaps better than wire in some ways. But the reason for doing that is actually twofold. One is it stabilizes the, um, the, the shape of the top bar. It means that the, the two legs cannot splay apart because obviously that is going to happen if you just allow gravity to do its work you know in, in the in the natural order of things where things you know always go wrong if they can then uh, those legs are going to splay out slightly and it's not going to go back comfortably into the hive and so the wire or wooden dowel was there to stabilize this frame 
The other purpose of it was that because we know that bees store their honey above brood, all the brood would be down here, hanging from, essentially hanging from the wire. All the honey, or most of the honey, or a, a great chunk of the honey, would be above this wire. Now that would mean that it would be very easy to come along with a knife and simply cut the honey out of this section without disturbing the brood underneath. And that was the other purpose for having a, a brace across there. These aren't difficult to make. As you can see, there's only, there's only one um, angled cut to worry about, very easy to do. And the, other, the only other tricky bit is this, uh, what's called a bird's mouth joint here, because that sits over the edge of the sloping surfaces of the sides of the hive, you see what I mean? It took me a while to figure out the best way of doing this. I'm not absolutely certain that this is the best way, the other method might be to, for example, plane these edges flat and have these bars sitting directly onto the flats. But I still think this bird's mouth joint is more secure because it kind of locks itself in. Now, obviously, the, the, the other thing you've got to do with, a, with this type of um, high frame is you've got to stabilize it at the, uh, at the side here um, so that it can't fall over. But that, when you've got a stack of them together and they're all propolized together, that's not really going to be a problem, I guess. This is a variation of uh, this bar. So this is the, um, if you like, the Cathedral High version of, of this bar, which has um, B space above it. Uh, and this is a bit tight and I, I've only got one hand free. So, uh, but you can see the idea. The idea is they build the comb on this bar and that leaves this gap above, which they can travel through along the length of the hive. Also, you could drill a hole in here exactly as I have in this one, so you can feed from above if you choose to do so. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of ideas, which I hope some of them will prove useful to you. So thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me somehow. I don't exactly know how, but it think it does on YouTube and uh, so there we go and I'll make another video very soon.